Good morning. Happy Thursday, October 14th, a.k.a. the day before I leave for Rhinebeck. I'm not excited at all. Um, slept like crap because I was super anxious. I chucked a cello string. Super anxious about making sure everything is packed. I don't like leaving without Colin to go places, but now that I'm out of the house, everything is is good. Now I'm just like a little kid on Christmas, like bouncy up and down excited. So we are working until three. Then we are also first Dunkin' Donuts of the trip. They put a sticker right on the thing. But yeah, first iced coffee of the trip. It's technically the trip has started since I have left the house. Working till three, then we have to go get gas. Then we're gonna leave and drive home. Actually, we're not gonna drive straight home because we need to go to the bank and cash some checks for the trip. And then we will go back to my parents' house. Where basically I'm gonna go to bed because I think I've said this before, in case I haven't, or in case you're tuning in just because this is the Rhinebeck portion and you're not here for the rest of October. Our bus to the airport leaves at 3.15 tomorrow morning. Yeah, um, our flight leaves at 7.30, takes about two hours on the bus to get there, so yeah. Um, I did decide on projects. Like I said, I would update you guys, I gotta do this quick before kids start coming in, but, um, this was, I made the decision, I did make the decision to do a uh, Rhinebeck trip cast on. Now you've seen this bag before, but there's something different in here now. My needles are stabbing through it. So um, besides this, I have brought um, a Christmas festive sock cast on for the festive sock along that Jude of Stranded Dye Works is hosting. Um, I brought my Edward Cullen sock and I brought this. I only brought three because one of my shopping goals is to buy a Nostapine. A Nostapine is a wooden device, I think, well, they're mostly wood, um, that helps you hand wind balls of yarn. So hope to get one of those. So if I do buy any yarn, and obviously there won't be a Swift and stuff, I will be able to wind. So we'll see. I have my shopping list all made. I'll share that with you guys maybe later today during lunch or something. But I have brought, this is a stash. Well, not, it's a relatively new stash. It is on her old label so this is gabby who is now plies and hellhounds but from when she was once upon a corgi this is actually from her stash she did a d stash and this is threat level midnight on her penny base which is 80 merino 10 cashmere 10 nylon 100 grams 383 yards and i have done some ribbing i'm gonna do actually my mom's sock pattern which is a three by one rib all the way down by like 15 rounds of one by one 13 or 13 uh, three by one all the way down the leg and then you know heel toe all that jazz i brought my pizza for it my um, pitter patter polymer pizza so yeah i'm gonna hope that this day goes quickly and that the kids are calm and i will talk to you guys at lunch and we'll talk about my shopping list for the trip okay it is one o'clock i have this prep hour two more classes and then i'm out of here those last two classes, though, can be really wild and really out of hand. So, fingers crossed they're not because classes today have been lasting forever. Which I know is because I'm excited to leave. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, oh my gosh. Great news, the sun has come out, finally. I feel like it's been cloudy literally all week since, like, Sunday. It's, yeah, makes me happy. Okay. Water. I'm bringing two water bottles with me probably. This one, Sock Camp, Fates Thread, Stress Level, Periskeller, my Knitting Gnome, my Simply Serving, Chickadee Wearing Socks, my Woolen Vinyl, America Runs on Pop Punk, and my Bella B sticker and the sticker a student gave me, but sadly I have lost a bunch of rhinestones off of. Okay, everyone cross your fingers that these last two classes are calm. We'll see. So I've left work and I'm now home at my parents and I pull in the driveway and I'm getting my stuff out of the back of the car and there's a flock of turkeys just hanging out in the side yard acting like I'm not here. Ah, uh, Janesville. Are you recording? Yes, we're on our way. We're on our way. Yay. Wee! It is also, what time is it? Almost 3.30. Yay.
We are hello. at our hello. We are at our <laughs> gate. Our flight leaves in just we, under an hour. We boarded in about 20 minutes. Yes, our plane is here. Yay. Yay! Now let's hope they'll give us our rental car on time. <laughs> I have two credit cards, so yeah. Yay! They no, they don't know about that. Oh, this was that was pre oh, pre vlogging well, time. All right, we're back. Mom's got her sweater on now. Okay. <laughs> we're we're here at Cake. I can't flip you around right this second because my phone doesn't let me do that. Do you know that you can't flip it around while you're actually talking no. to it? Yeah. No. Yeah, now I look like I'm talking to myself. Do you want myself. me in frame on? Yes, in frame, please. Okay. You're here too. So, yeah. um, I'll take some footage when we get in. And then at two, we're going to Indy. Yay! Yay! Ignore my sweaty forehead, it's so hot outside. It's not, it's only like 60 something, 70 something, but the sun is very, very strong. So we got to check in early to our Airbnb because we were done at <laughs> Cake Palooza and I just like, I'm gonna call her, see if we can check in early. She's like, yep, yeah, sure. So make sure the cleaner's gone and you guys can, can head over. So awesome. So I'm gonna flip this around and give you guys a little tour of our Airbnb. So we're on the second floor. You come in this front door and come up the stairs. The top of the stairs is the first bedroom. This one is a queen. It's really nice. This place does have heat and air conditioning with this awesome closet. Then this is the kitchen dining room area. Full kitchen adorable little living room. We're right on Main Street. So we're within walking distance of a bunch of really awesome stuff. It's got pretty original hardwood, a blown out picture of the couch and the love seat, tiny closet, dining room area. That's the thermostat. It's got another closet. This adorable bathroom with really cool tile, really nice shower, vanity, me in the mirror. And then this is where mom and I are staying. So did some damage at Cake Palooza. We won't talk about that right now, but this is our room. Yay. Okay, we're gonna get unpacked a little bit and then we're gonna go find some lunch. Okay, here's mom. We're at Dino's, Dino's Cafe, having lunch. I'm having a falafel and Mama's having a Yay! Okay, so we're back. God, my hair is atrocious. I need to do something about this before we leave. Okay, so we're back. If you stay in Sagardi's, go to Bina's Cafe. It was really good. Uh, we had a gyro and a falafel, which I showed you guys. I'm not gonna show you any of the yarn I bought at Cake Palooza. I'm gonna save it for my haul when we get home. So we have, eh, we should probably head over there shortly, but we're gonna go to Indie Untangled. I'll bring you along with that too. Okay, we're here, Indie Untangled. We're one, two, three, four. But like six and seven in line. Yay! I'm gonna flip this. There's mom. I'm gonna flip this around and show you the beautiful view we have here. It's beautiful. It is a beautiful day. It's hot. There's a lot of bees, but it's a beautiful day. This is the barn we're gonna start in. Yeah. Okay, so I filmed nothing at Indian Untangled. I'm very sorry. I was very busy socializing with people. It was also 10 million degrees out, but bought some fun stuff. So now mom and I are hanging at the Airbnb. We are watching very old seasons of Bake Off and working on some knitting. We're gonna get some pizza here in a little bit and that'll probably be a relatively early bedtime because we've been up since two. Tomorrow, fingers crossed, the weather holds off until the later afternoon and we will be at the festival. So I will put some more stuff in later and I will probably talk to you guys tomorrow. Okay, 
Okay, so we're here in line. Here's mom. There's Betsy. She's hiding now. So we're here in line. We got our coffee. There's mom. And yeah, ready, set, go. It's cloudy. I have my shady side on. It's cloudy. Hopefully it stays cloudy. It's supposed to rain in the afternoon. Find out. Okay, I'll check in with you when we start walking around. people everywhere it's not as bad as two years ago but it's not bad I got most amazing sweater quantity of yarn I'm so happy right now I can't wait to show you guys um, yes come here mom found it yes because sadly it doesn't like Fox Hill Farms is here and they are my favorite like farm to fleece place but this place is very excellent I'll show you the card and stuff when we do the haul video Mama Parade is coming. Yeah, keep following. Keep I think I'm officially out of money, which is not bad. I did some some good stuff. Again, I'll show you guys later. Probably gonna do a vlog when I get home to show you all the stuff. I uh, got some matter root, yay, and some yarn and an ostapine. And I have one more purchase to make, but that's not a necessarily festival purchase. It's a nice breeze. It's not terrible. I'm a little warm in my sweater, but it's not terrible. So right now I'm waiting for my mom to come back. And then I think we're gonna go do some meetups and maybe just hang out and in for a little bit. Okay, I'm standing outside our Airbnb. I'm getting ready to leave. I didn't film haul stuff after we got back last night, but I'll show you guys when I get home. October 19th so if you've watched the first part of the vlog and you're not here for the haul 
thanks for checking out my trip. I will hopefully in the future try to be better about vlogging, but I wasn't on my phone much because A, the reception at the Dutchess County Fairgrounds is not great. We were actually able to make phone calls this year, so that was a plus. In previous years, you can't get out anything, text, nothing. So that was better. So if you are here for the haul, welcome. It's, it's extensive. <laughs> Listen, haven't been to a good fiber festival in two years. It has been two years since my last ride back. We had a long time of not buying yarn or, you know, not being able to touch yarn to buy it at festivals. And I went a little crazy. It's okay. That's what this was for. So I'm gonna start just, actually I'm gonna talk about my Rhinebeck sweater first. So it needs to be washed because it was warm that day. But this is my Shady Side by Samantha Guerin, who I was lucky enough to meet at the festival. And it is made out of plies and hellhounds in her Marie Cutie base in the Selkuth color. And then the mohair was book cart on her fig lace base. I love this sweater. I have grand plans for an advent version of this where I have an extra, I have extra of this color and I have a Fangirl Fibers Gilmore Girls winter calendar for advent coming. So I was thinking of using this with a white mohair as this stripe and then doing the advents in this stripe. Very excited. We'll see what happens. So this was my one Rhinebeck sweater and I'm really glad I only had one sweater because it was so hot. It wasn't as bad Saturday, but Friday was a scorcher especially by the time we were out doing things okay so I guess let's start with the India Untangled stuff not India Untangled the Cake Palooza and India Untangled stuff so I also have a cup full of things so I have already used some of my stuff like I've put my pins on so I'll show you what what we did so this pin right here is from Lamb Strings and this pin was a gift from Megan that she bought for me at Disney in May. And then she gave it to me at the festival. Something smells weird in here. I think it's my hand sanitizer. Okay, so we did that. Um, let's see, I need to do a little organization because some of these stickers are not for in here. Do, 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 do. Could I pause it and cut it out? I could, but am I a little tired of recording at this point? I am indeed. So. Just gonna kind of shuffle some stuff around. Da da da. Okay, so I bought um, some smaller things, which I'll talk about first before I get into the yarn I bought. So um, Chelsea Yarns was there. I love mugs of this style. I have a um, summer sock camp one from K from 2020's camp, and I have a sweater weather one from Emily of Fangirl Fibers that she did with a set of Progress Keepers also in 2020. So this is my Chelsea Lux ceramic mug or you know porcelain mug I was very excited about that because I love these you can do big cups of coffee in this like if you have a ninja maker like I do so I got that I got is that the only little thing I bought at Cake Palooza? it might have been so oh, I was also given the Chelsea Yarns bag because this is the bag she gives everybody when you buy yarn from her and so I guess we'll just crack into to some yarn and I'll go in order of what I purchased. So I stopped at the Yarn Birds truck. I will link everything I can down below. I will do my best to not forget. But Yarn Birds truck, I got some skein cocaine on her hot sock, which is an 80-20 merino nylon, 30, 437 yards, which is a lot for an 80-20 to 113 grams. This color is called the special. I believe Kay, no, I know, because I texted her, but Kay has this as well, so we'll be able to be sock twins, yay. All right, and then at the Yarn Birds truck, I purchased Emily of Fangirl Fibers Pumpkin Spice Cake colorway, right? Pumpkin Spice Cake, yep, which was the Yarn Birds exclusive on their truck. This is on her 8020 Superwash Merino Fingering, 400 yards to 100 grams with a little pumpkin spice cake progress keeper. This is probably the first one I'm going to cast on of this pile, to be honest with you. All right. I've been watching, or I had been watching. This doesn't need to be in here. This is a podcast thing. I, like you, have probably watched the Grocery Girls once or twice in my life, and these talk about the Hugh Loco Backyard Chickens collection. I was finally able to get a Backyard Chicken. Backyard Chicken. This is the Blue Splash Wheaton Rooster. 
that comes with this is that's the main color is the blue splash wheaton and it comes with a pumpkin 20 gram and a juniper 20 gram i am losing my light it's got a cloud has gone over the sun but i'll edit this and that'll help so that was a backyard chicken set also from the yarn birds truck and then i snagged a skein from a whimsical wood yarn co on her pixie toe sock which is 463 yards 75 25 superwash merino nylon to 100 grams and this color is called take children out of the room ear muff them it's called cute ass <laughs> it's very neon rainbowy i i picked it up i'm like no i don't need this and then i had to get it so it's cool i like it a lot yeah all right so that was everything i bought at the yarn birds truck at cake palooza and then I went over to the Chelsea Luck or Chelsea Lux, Chelsea Yarns booth and got a sock set. This is called Gorgeous Gourd. It is also on her 8020 Superwash base with a 20 gram mini, 100 gram. Woo! Sorry. You're a weird ear twitch. Sorry. <laughs> Not gonna cut that out. You're just gonna deal with my weirdness. At this point, you've been here for enough of it. So 8020, 400 yards, 20 gram mini. A very bright pink mini and then a more muted variegated yarn okay. and then I got the mug and the cup okay those were all my cake palooza purchases it was a smaller festival I thought it was good there were a lot of bees that wasn't anyone's fault though a lot of bees um, well spread out uh, not too many people let in at once it was well run I liked it hopefully they'll bring it back next year then we went to Indian Tangled so, um, at India Untangled, I had pretty much one goal, and that was to see Gabby of Plies and Hell Hots. So, those of you who don't know, I did a sock design for one of Gabby's book boxes earlier this year. So, we've collaborated a little bit, and we've chatted on Instagram here and there, so I was very excited to meet her in person. Uh, if you saw my, uh, in the previous vlog, I did, like, a photo montage, and then I put it on Instagram. So, I did finally get to meet her. The picture I put in is from, um actual Rhinebeck day because uh we were sweaty and gross <laughs> at India Untangled because like Gigi's here she's gonna sit on the bag real quick real quick I gotta get this going we're at seven minutes already so I bought three skeins from Gabby I bought she had the full moon collection there what she has out I bought Harvest Moon on her Marie Cutie base since we all know I'm a big fan of that so it is um 75 Superwash Corey Dale 25 Nylon, 100 grams, 443 yards. I, I desperately, can you not? I desperately wanted to do another shady side using this and then her pumpkin colorway, which is for the lace part, which is a bright orange, but I needed to uh, space my money out a little more. Can you please, please hold. All right, back to my Gabby arm. So like I said, I need to spread, spread my funds out. So I got Harvest Moon. I got... I have wanted this color since I found out she who she was, like just as of dire I found her. It is called like my cold dead heart on her penny base, which is her merino cashmere nylon base, which I'm doing my threat level midnight socks out of, which I started for the festival as my whip for the festival. I love this base. I'm very excited to knit more socks with it. So that's like my cold dead heart. And then she did a show color called, oh my God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm which is an office reference. It's got a Michael Scott sticker on it. I got this on her Marie Cutie base because, duh. I like this a lot too. Okay, that was what I bought from Gabby. Then we went over to the other building. So Gabby was in Horseshoe and I can't remember what the other one was called, but it was, there was a little less vendors in there. Uh, Lambstrings, Lavender Loon, Hudson and West. I think India Untangles actual booth where they had like merch and stuff was there. But I had, I had heard of Lambstrings many, many years ago, and I've never been able to really procure yarn from her. So I was able to get on her Tra La La Sock, which is her 7525, the Summer Goth colorway. I like this a lot. It's going to be a really pretty sock. I might, like, bust out one of my other patterns for this and not do String of Lights or Second Breakfast. Might bust out one of my other ones. But I really like this. It's very soft and pretty. Okay, so that was Indie Day. I call it Indie Day because those were the two indie festivals we went to. Yep, that is everything. So I'm going to pause right now, load everything back in, and then we'll talk about Rhinebeck stuff. 
All right, so Saturday was the festival proper, AKA the New York Sheep and Wool Festival in Rhinebeck, New York at the Dutchess County Fairgrounds. So I had, I had budgeted to spend about half of my funding at India Untangled and about half at the Sheep and Wool Festival itself. Sorry, I have socks on and my feet are a little, I've had them on all day, so I'm taking them off. Okay, you didn't need to know that, but you need to know why I was wiggling weird. So I had several booths I wanted to hit. I made a list in my phone. I had pattern specs, I had yardage, I had everything. So we get there and I immediately, first of all, we found out the food barn was actually there because we thought it wasn't because there were no food vendors listed. So I ran through the food barn and sadly, the one food booth I wanted to be there was not there. If any of you remember at 2019, there was a guy who had shortbread cookies, like little shortbread cookies, and there was a cardamom chai one that was really good. I can't remember the name of the vendor. I wanna say it was Crave, but I don't think that's right because I've Googled it and I cannot find them. So if you were at the 2019 festival and remember the cookie booth, please let me know what it was. So I did not go back in the cookie booth. I kind of rage quit and left. So then uh, my mom and I split off from her friend, Betsy, who you saw in the video and in the, some of the photos. And she and I, my mom and I went through Barnes A, B and C. So the, my first stop was actually Bumblebee Acres. Even though they ended up being my last purchase of the festival, I uh, <laughs> I do this thing because they're such good friends. I love you guys. Um, <laughs> and I just go to the booth and I grab what I want and I stick it behind the counter and then I come back and get it. I normally don't go for as long before coming back, but this time I was gone all day. So I picked up a skein for a friend who I'm going to ship out tomorrow. So Laren, if you're watching this, I'm sending it tomorrow. Please remember to text me back. Um, and I bought two skeins from Bumblebee Acres, which is very restrained for me, if you know. It's because I did a lot of damage with them at Sheep and Wool, so I knew I wasn't going to do as much damage at Rhinebeck. That's kind of my MO. I think two years ago, I only bought three skeins from them. So I got Lord of the Rings colors, like I said I was going to, and I got Isengard on their Coquette base, which is also a 75-25. The Marie Cutie and the Coquette are very similar bases, similar fiber content. I don't believe they're from the same mill, but they're very similar fiber content. So that's Isengard. And I got Arwen. Arwen is like one of my favorite. I love Arwen. I love Eowyn are my two favorite female characters in all Lord of the Rings. So this is Arwen Evenstar on Coquette. She was a uh, advent color a couple years ago. So I'm excited to knit this up. I kind of have an idea what this is going to look like knit up. I'm very excited about it. Also their yarn smells so good. It is my favorite. So they were my first stop. Then I, so I think I talked about maybe, maybe not. I did in the video, in the vlog part, that I was really excited to see Fox Hill Farms. I had bought a sweaters quantity of their Cormo DK two years ago that I'm making into a cardigan by Isabel Kramer two years later. <laughs> and um, I was excited to get some worsted weight from them because I wanted a farm yarn and I was going to make sure that I didn't get a light colorway. So two years ago, here's a skate of it. Here's the colorway I got two years ago from Fox Hill Farms on their Moret. So it's a very light oatmeal color and I am not, I'm not equipped for light colors. I spill I use dry erase marker. I'm a teacher. So I was going to hopefully get like a brown or a gray, something darker than this. And then I realized that they weren't there. Found out later why they weren't there. Thea Coleman posted on her Instagram. It turns out that the woman who comes to vend um, had, had come in contact with someone with COVID and she did not want to spread it to anybody inadvertently. So she stayed home. Which made me very sad, but it ended up working out in the end. So this is new to me. I had never heard of them, but um, Bartlett Yarns Incorporated. They are out of Harmony, Maine. And I went on their website and their Instagram. They have been in business since 1820. It's a 200-year-old yarn mill. So they do milling. They have their wool blends and all this stuff. They gave me their color card. So I was super jazzed. My, I have to give my mom credit for this. So mom, I know you're watching. Maybe she's watching this. I don't know, but thank you. So I was outside sulking. She went in this booth. So this was actually a tent at the end of building. I think it was C, C or D, whatever had the books in it. She was, it, they were a tent at the end of that. And mom went in there while I was sulking outside and probably trying to text people. And she goes, Lindsay, you have to come in here. And I'm like, okay, fine. 
So I walk into the back of their tent and they have a literal like here, but two wall of two ply worsted weight farm yarn in colors. So I love farm yarn because I like I don't like the term workhorse. I don't like the term rustic. I like the term heirloom. These are heirloom yarns, meaning that whatever you knit out of this will last as long as you take care of it and don't get moths into it, will last forever. Not really processed. There's still plant matter and stuff in it from the sheep. And oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. Oh, this is actually a pretty accurate color. It's a little lighter than this. It's one of those yarns that's really hard to photograph its true color. It's coming out pretty close. It's a little more green, blue-green, and a little less gray. Let's see if I can like shade it a little bit. No, it's not gonna work. So oh, if I hold it back here, it's a little more, that's a little more accurate. So I bought two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, I bought nine skeins of this yarn because it's going to be an Oban sweater by Thea Coleman. Um, cable sweaters eat a lot of yarn. We all love, I love cables, as you can see from my Alice Starmore <laughs> book that's not shoved back where it's supposed to be. If you watch the podcast long enough, you've watched my blog, you know I love cables. So it takes a lot of yarn to make a cable sweater. They eat yarn because cables, there's a lot of extra space. So nine skeins of this. Now, I made a promise to Kay that I wouldn't cast on a sweater that was cabled until January. You'll know why in a little while. I might have to break my promise. I have another cabled sweater I want to do, but it's out of Nick Picks yarn. So I might, I might cast this on once I finish something. So this was my biggest haul, how, or like quantity haul. I got this yarn for less than $150 for nine skeins. There are 210 yards on each one of these bad boys and it's a two ply and it's farmy and it's got lanolin in it and I'm very excited in case you can't tell. So sweaters quantity. I wanted one sweaters quantity, got my one sweaters quantity. Was so excited I almost ended up going back to get a second one. I spread the love instead. Okay, so um, two years ago, I found the We Ones booth as we were leaving and I was completely out of money. I was able, you saw these on yesterday's, um, if you watch, are watching these in order as I put them up, um, yesterday's October, but they're tiny um, stitch markers and they're little sleeping kittens. They're little cat loaves and I cannot get them to focus. They are so small. There were four, I have one on a project. Yeah, tiny little ones. And then I saw they had bags. I don't have a bag in this style. It's one of these kind of like knot bags where you slip the handle in. So the blueprints are for a domestic house cat model X93C. <laughs> and it's got bottomless pit unit, solar receptors, hidden skin shredders, entrapment area, whisker, all sorts of silly stuff. So got that. That'll be good for socks for, you know, working on them while walking. So I got that from the Wee Ones booth as well. And then, oh, shoot, hold on. We'll talk about my stickers next. So then I went to the Matter Root booth, which I didn't know they were gonna be there. So when you looked in the book, at least online, they didn't have a booth listed. So I was worried they were gonna be online only. So I bought the um, shirt they have that has the heart with all the knit stitches. You're probably familiar with it. If not, I wore it on Monday's vlog. So go back and find the 18th and I wore that. And then I bought a bag. So I was gonna get the moon phase bag that everyone and their mother has. I was gonna get a sweater sized one until I looked over while standing in line waiting to check out. They have sock sized ones, which is way more my speed. So it's got a black waxed bottom, which is super sturdy. I mean, watch, like it stays. Uh, it's got a flannel. This is my favorite type of flannel. Megan, what do you call this Slytherin flannel? It's my favorite like 90s, like flannel from the night. Like it was my favorite flannel in the 90s, it still is. It's got these gorgeous knit stitches and a inside. These are all hand like printed and what does it say? Cut, printed and sewn in Maine. And then it's a roll bag. So it rolls down and then it buckles. So you can buckle it so you can get stuff out through the top or you can roll it down to secure it. That's my matter root bag. Very happy with that. So that's all my big stuff. I don't think I'm forgetting. Oh, I'm forgetting my Nastapine. My Nastapine is downstairs. 
So a nostopine is a, I'm not going to show it to you because people laugh at me when I show people my nostopine. It's for hand winding yarn. I'll put a picture of it in like right here. I'll take a picture and put it in. So it's for hand winding center pole balls of yarn. I bought it for mini skein purposes. So I got that. I was gifted a spurtle from the kitchen utensil booth, which is downstairs in the kitchen. And then I got some stuff, some swaggy stuff. Now, I did buy, sorry, I did buy a Rhinebeck t-shirt, which you will see later in the vlogs because it's in the laundry because it's all wrinkly because it comes in a, I love how they're packaged. It comes in like a little book, like a cardboard that's like shrinked with like plastic around it. It's pretty fun. So I got the teal version with the logo on it. I got this sticker. This I did get at Indy. This is from, excuse you, madam. This is from uh, Lambstrings Yarn. So it's Cats, Skulls, Pizza, Netflix, Yarn Times 2, repeat from Star which is a pattern direction, which is funny. And then let's see, I stopped at the Harrisville booth, did not buy any yarn because I'm just gonna order it online, but I was able to look at it. Got a Harrisville sticker. Got a Fibromancer podcast sticker from Megan. I ordered in my Rhinebeck swag, a replacement sticker for my water bottle that broke that had my 2019 sticker, say so I had leftovers, so that's this sticker. And I got from the Nitty Witch, she was handing out these really cute, sorry, it's upside down, really cute stitch markers with a tiny witch hat and a pumpkin. I got, even though I did not participate, <laughs> the Caddy Jacks half and half wrap kale from Emily. And then Natalie was giving out her Love and Stitches buttons, and I have that right here. So that's it, you guys. That's the haul. I'm going to knit all this, and now that I've recorded, I can start knitting it now. Yay. Okay, I hope you're still enjoying Vlogtober. Um, and I will see you guys in the next Vlogtober episode, and I'm hopefully going to go back to regular podcasts here in November before Vlogmas. I'm going to try to do Vlogmas and regular podcasts. We'll see. Okay. Ryan Beck, I love you. I had the best time. Compared to my trip in 2019 where I didn't know anybody and didn't know anything and it was kind of overwhelming. I was kind of anxious and miserable the whole time. Completely different. I love all my friends, my old friends, my new friends, my internet friends, my real life friends. I love everyone I met. I had the best time. <laughs> I really did. I might have gotten a little teary as our plane took off. And it was not because I knew I had to travel for 12 hours. But just, I was, I was sad I was leaving. Um, in the heat of the moment, I'm like, I'm coming back next year. It might be an every other year thing. We'll have to see. But right back 2021, you were lovely. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.